Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Farhana Hassan and today's topic of discussion is role of MRI in perimenopausal bleeding and its correlation with TDS. Uh, EUB is one of the most prevalent gynecological issues. Up to 30% of uh, uh, reproductive age women are affected uh, because of it and up to 50% of perimenopausal women. It is defined as excessive uh, bleeding that occurs outside of uh, normal cyclic menstruation. ACOJ has adopted the palm queen classification to solve uh, the issue of what exactly are the uh, various causes of abnormal uterine bleeding. The palm stands for structural causes and coin stands for various other uh, causes. Like palm is polyp, adenomyosis, leomyoma, malignancy and coin stands for uh, coagulopathy, ovulatory dysfunction, endometrial causes, iatrogenic and unclassified. Uh, it is uh, very important to judiciously uh, evaluate the causes and ascertain whether it is benign or malignant because it is very crucial because uh, to determine the treatment strategy and the final clinical outcome. Uh, the aim of the study is to assess the role of TVS and MR in the characterization and to know the extent of lesions in uh, uh, perimenopausal bleeding and to compare the accuracy of TVS and MRI. To assess the diagnostic potential of TVS and MRI in terms of sensitivity and specificity, secondary objective is to know the most useful imaging modality of choice for the same. Now, it's a prospective study. Hospital-bound referred patients are... Uh, uh, taken uh, that fulfill the class criteria of uh, inclusion criteria and the exclusion uh, criteria evaluations are not taken. Final confirmation was done by histopath examination and the color doppler was also used. Uh, inclusion criteria, the patients that were referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis for radiological evaluation of abnormal uterine bleeding Exclusion criteria, the pregnant women, unmarried ones, women having endocrine abnormalities and bleeding disorders, women with an intrauterine device in C2, all patients in whom uh, histopath reports couldn't be obtained as the patient in undergo surgery. Now we have many age group patients, but 40 to 49 year old uh, uh, patients were uh, making the majority of our uh, sample. Now, presenting complaint, most of women, almost all had bleeding per vagina complaint and then uh, vaginal discharge, pelvic pain, weight loss, fever could also be another uh, symptoms. Comorbidities, anemia was the most common abnormality, a comorbidity associated with these women. And then next one is hypertension. Let's, uh, let's discuss some cases. Uh, the first case is 47-year-old women having heavy uterine bleeding. On transvaginal sonography, we get globular enlarged uterus with heterogeneous myometrium and indistinct junctional zone along with tiny myometrial cysts. Now, on MRI, uh, it is showing enlarged uterus with thickened endometrial uh, junctional zone and T2 hyperintense uh, cysts in myometrium. On HPE, it is shown as uh, diffuse adenomyosis. 54 year old women with irregular bleeding and weight loss. Now, on TVS, we get a lobulated hyperechoic lesion with fluid in the endometrial cavity, a corresponding uh, Doppler image showing internal vascularity. On MRI, it shows iso-intense mass in the endometrial cavity with hyperintense fluid surrounding it on T2 without invasion of the myometrium and showing restriction on DW image. Endometrial carcinoma on histopath examination. Case 3. For the 3-year-old female presented with perimenopausal bleeding, on transvaginal sonography, it depicts a diffuse homogeneous thickening of endometrium with a few tiny cystic areas. Diffuse endometrial thickening predominantly in the fundal region with tiny hyperintense areas within it on MR. On histopath uh, diagnosis, we have simple endometrial hyperplasia. Is four. 55 year old women, 55 year old women presented with perimenopausal bleeding and pelvic pain. 
Spontaneous or well-defined homogeneous hyperequilibration seen in the endometrial cavity with feeding vessel on the corresponding Doppler. On MR also, we have a well-defined T1 ISO T2 ISO2 hyperintense lesion in endometrial without restriction on DW images. Endometrial polyp were diagnosed on histopath examination. Now, uh, fifth case is 38-year-old female with abnormal bleeding uh, through vagina and uh, pelvic pain. Now, on TVS, we get a well-defined heterogeneously hypoechoic lesion in the fundal region with minimal fluid surrounding it and showing peripheral vascularity. On MR, we get a well-defined lesion having intermediate signal intensity on T1 and low signal intensity on T2 in the fundal region of uterus with uh, fluid surrounding it and no restriction on DW image. On histopath, it is confirmed to be leomyoma. These are the typical features observed in uh, various lesions on MRI, as I've discussed with the cases. So, to conclude, we have uh, established uh, that TVS has been the imaging modality of choice in the evaluation of AUB for the past few decades. However, most of them provide ambiguous results. So, we... Uh, uh, a total of 65 patients came to us, 52 undergone MR and HP examination, 9 were lost to follow up and 4 got operated without MRI. So, uh, we have lots of findings to discuss uh, and the in our study, the diffuse thickening of endometrium was found as a common cause of both benign and malignant etiology. Most of the cases having focally thickened endometrium were suspected as a polyp and focal endometrial hyperplasia in our study. In our study, no malignancy was found with endometrial thickness of 10 mm. 30 cases displayed a heterogeneous endometrial ecotexture, while 22 had homogeneous endometrial ecotexture on TBS. On evaluation with TBS, 13 had distended endometrial cavity, 3 had obliterated, and the rest had a normal endometrial cavity, and these findings were reassured on MRI. Now, on TBS, cystic changes were the most common ancillary finding in endometrium. Intralesional cysts were found in similar frequency on MRI. The presence of an intralesional cyst in endometrial pathology suggests the benign nature of lesions, particularly endometrial hyperplasia and polyp. Calcification was second most ancillary finding on TBS, and MR showed necrosis, hemorrhage, calcification, endometrial fluid as associated findings. On examination of the cervix with TBS, only six had a cervical mass. And out of these, one with parametrial invasion, one with adnexal involvement, and three with ball bladder involvement. However, MRI showed nine cases with cervical lesions. And most of them, about six, had parametrial invasion, about five had adnexal involvement, and seven had pelvic organ involvement. So, MRI was found to be more efficient as compared to TBS in the detection of cervical masses and other pelvic organ involvement. And for lymph nodes also, TBS uh, failed to detect the lymph node involvement while MRI can uh, reveal lymph node metastasis. Quite efficient. So, uh, most of the uterine lesions uh, distributed were mainly fibroids and adenomyosis are quite common and then endometrial carcinoma. With the histopathological detection, we have most common uh, finding as endometrial carcinoma followed by adenomyosis and then fibroid. Uh, on comparison with the histopath examination, MRI is quite useful in detect detection of endometrial carcinoma. It has almost equal to or more than uh, efficiency in detecting endometrial carcinoma. Adenomyosis is uh, quite efficiently dis uh, diagnosed on TBS also. So, the sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity is quite comparable for TVS and MRI, but specificity is quite high for MR and uh, also accuracy. To conclude, uh, perimenopausal bleeding is commonly encountered in day-to-day -day practice and because it has such a huge impact on women's health, early detection is crucial. With early detection alone, it is possible to improve the survival rate. With sensitivity and specificity of 60 and 93.75% respectively for malignant uterine lesions, TBS is a good primary imaging modality. 
but there are many false positive and there are many false negatives so that can lead to unnecessary intervention and neglect uh, neglecting a serious disease respectively with a sensitivity and specificity of 100% and 96.87% for mri the diagnostic performance of mri was better than tbs thank you everyone